I'm Camila, and this is the collaboration video between the Center for Regenerative Agriculture and Ventura Land Trust. We're going to talk about compost critters today, which is why we're near our compost pile. And these are my helpers today. Can you guys introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Jasmine. Hi, I'm Evu. He's my brother. <laughs> and we're going to have them help us look for some critters that are in our pile today. All right, so here we have our compost station. We have a few piles rotating. Um, the pile that I'm next to is the freshest pile. So we add our food sources, our food scraps from the kitchen, and then we layer it with some, some of the materials we need. So what you need for a healthy compost pile is a really awesome balance between carbon and nitrogen sources. And what those are is basically any food type of resource of food for the, that you would eat and throw away is food for your soil. So that would be like your nitrogen source. Um, do you guys recognize what this is? Oh, yeah, it's celery. It's celery. And so it starts off looking like familiar, but then it ends up kind of decomposing and turning less familiar. So when you add your food scraps, your nitrogen source in here, the next step is to properly evenly layer it with a, a, a nice carbon source, which in this case, we have a lot of wood chips. And so this is something really great to use because it, it is food source also for the microorganisms that start to break down the food source you add. And it helps to heat up the pile too. You can use different various sources as your carbon source. Some people use like hay or um, dried leaves that they're cleaning up from around their yard. You can also even use newspaper. Um, so that's that. And then we have our, our bin here. So this bin is a, called a bio stack. It's not really available commercially, but it's a really great setup idea. So if you wanted to build your own pile at home, you can do something similar if you wanted. Basically all you need is some kind of enclosement. You can use chicken wire as a cylinder setup. You can also use your own like pallets as wood, as long as there's a way for airflow to come in. So you can see there's these little slits here, which allow oxygen to enter through to the system, which you need. So oxygen helps get the pile breaking down faster. And essentially it's breathing. So we have a, a living, breathing pile here that is gonna turn all this food waste into food source for soil. Okay. All right, so let's take a look inside this pile and see what we got going on. So there's critters in here, there's food source, and I even see there's some hair. So when you cut your hair, it's also a great source for your compost pile. And even the birds, birds will sometimes use it to go make their nests and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so let's see what we can recognize and then let's see what we don't recognize out of this pile. So I see this is a good type of brown material, some kind of grass that was maybe weeds that we picked. What else do you guys notice in here? Celery bottom, some cabbage over here, oops, cabbage, <laughs> an orange. Oh, citrus. Yeah, citrus is okay in moderation. Um, do you guys know what a lot of cleaning products are made out of? Citrus? There's a lot of citrus um, chemicals in there because they help break down grease. So, and they're antibacterial. But in a compost pile, we want the bacteria, the healthy bacteria, to be breaking down our food source. So that's why it's not recommended in a huge amounts to put citrus in here, but just a couple here Had and there. Duck egg shell. Oops. Ooh, that's a great source of calcium. Duck egg, chicken And it's eggs. actually even better if we crunch it up because the worms and all the critters that live here, they don't have very big mouths, so <laughs> we want to help them out. <laughs> all right, so now I think it's time. Do you guys have those little jars? Yeah. Let's try to see if we can collect any critters that we mm. might find. And these critters are so important. They are what breaks down this organic matter into nutrient-rich soil. Okay, so. I have an avocado with some worms in it. Let's separate the worms from the food. And the red wiggler worms are one of the, my favorite critters to find in the pile. So that's a baby one. You can even see as it's like moving and squirming forward, the little parts of the body that are darker. It's like some of the food it's been eating. So it's just digesting that. Oh. Let's see if we can find something with feet and stuff. We might have to dig a little what deeper. What in here would maybe have that, those characteristics? There could be a lot of things. There could be any kind of insect. Do you know how many legs insects have? Six. Six, Six is right? correct. Yeah. 
And so, ooh, it's getting warmer. You can kind of feel the heat. Yeah, you I definitely even feel see it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a good sign. Oh, there's What's one. That? What's that? What's that? Grab him. He might be one of our critters that we're looking for. I can't grab very well. <laughs> With the gloves. With the gloves. So do you guys see this kind of white color coming in? It's like very subtle, oh, but yeah. that's actinobacteria. That's the type of bacteria we oh, like and fungus a big clump of it. that grows and builds heat in our pile. So as everything's decomposing. So if we touch that, will it be hot? It won't be hot, but it just is a good indicator that your pile is getting hot. Any other critters? And a fork. So, oh yeah, I oh. found a... Some kind of creature. Let's put him in your jar. A slug that looks like a clam. Oh, does he have a shell? He does have a shell. I also think it's, he's not alive anymore. Oh yeah, anymore. Maybe. <laughs> perhaps. Deceased. Maybe it got too hot for him. I know. Um, so you can see this pile's a little dry, but usually a really healthy pile. And as we're getting towards the lower layers, you can see it's a different color than this top soil. Oh, yeah. and it's, kind of like it's very subtle, but it's darker and it's more moist. So we yeah, want a good moisture content. Enough where it clumps together and it keeps its shape. Like and then it kind of crumbles easily too, so it's not too dense. So that again, all the water can still seep through. And it's so nice and warm right here. Yeah, that's why it's such a good place for critters. Oh, the heat. Oh, and there's lots of worm. There's a worm on it. Nice. Oops. Let me grab Oh, one. There's several. There's oh, he's right there. Oh, there's a centipede. Oops. And there's another guy. Put some dirt in there. All right, so captured quite a lot of compost critters in that last little yeah, shot there. Yeah, we did. There. We have lots of jars over there lined yeah. up. Yeah. Did you guys recognize any of those critters? Volipoli, uh, worm, centipede. centipede, worm, centipede. Uh, Anything else that you recognized? Things. Was there some things that you didn't recognize? Yeah, yeah there was that really small red one that I couldn't see very well. Those tiny white jumping ones. I saw oh, one that was very, flies. very small that did not jump. It was just had like teeny teeny legs, but I was I tried to pick it up, but then it um, jumped off. Yeah, kind of so so the, off. they're kind of they're e sometimes easier to capture, but sometimes they're a little tricky and they kind of fly away or crawl away. And so we'll get a chance, luckily, to look at some of the creature critters we captured under the microscope in a little bit. But before we do that, I just want to take some of this pile with all the fresh food source, nitrogen all source, the green stuff. all the green stuff, and even some of the, the brown stuff, because there's already critters in here that are very beneficial for can breaking down. Yeah, you can put that in there. I'm going to start hand folding, shoveling this in, and we're going to build a new compost pile just down the way. Let's, let's take the cucumber. The expired <laughs> cucumber. I know. And it's really good, actually, to mix different compost piles, because then you're mixing all the good, diverse um, biology that's being broken down and so then you get better compost here we come compost. so now we're at our new site for our new pile and this is a site that has been used for other compost piles and so we actually have some really rich humus here and i wanted to ask my helpers what do you guys notice about this really nutrient rich humus uh, well, it has roots in it a lot of Roots. Okay, so you're seeing some roots. It's also really, really Wood smooth trips. and easy. It's not compacted. Mm. That's the opposite word of compacted. It's aerated. It's, it's aerated. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's nice and. Oh, and there's still worms in it. You still see some yeah, worms. Look at this one. big fat worm. That's it's pretty, so big. That's a good sign. The, the I'll put it over there. The color of it is blackish brown. It's like a really rich color. Oh, whoa. and when you guys clump it together, does it stay in a clump? No. Let me try. No. Not so much. So this means it's, 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 what is it lacking if it's not clumping up? Moisture, right? Water? Moisture. And so this is just, a, it's natural that it dries out if there's no yes. food source above it. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to get really close. Can you guys smell the handful? What does it smell like to you? Uh, dirt. And does not exactly smell strong. It doesn't, doesn't smell doesn't. that much. Does it smell like gross rotten food no 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 it smells kind of clean but not in a like windex type way yeah it's actually like a fresh clean smell like a fresh earth soil yeah it's kind of like how um like your atmosphere outside of your house smells like after it rains oh that's mm. a great description i love that and so this is exactly what we want to build our pi our next pile on top of. So let's kind of smooth it out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this bio stack 
and there's a couple things in there, some brown material and some weeds. So we're gonna just shift it over to this spot and then start layering in our food scraps that we just brought over. Okay. Oh, do you guys see what this is? Plastic. That's Here's plastic. another one. Here's another one. These are good. something that they never decompose. Let's show them to the camera a little bit. So these the are- The apples that they were on were long ago gone. Yeah, so the, the produce stickers that are on your apples and any produce you find at the stores. It's really beneficial to take off the sticker and throw it in the trash and not your compost pile because you'll just end up finding them all around. So let's take it. I'll come to this side. And then I'm just going to go a few feet forward and right here is perfect. All right. So Great. Should we uh, cover up that? There's some hay right here, too. Here. Would this count as our brown carbon? Yes, that's a great awesome resource for our carbon and then we have our wheelbarrow of food scraps which let's have Eru put in our first layer which also has our critters in there so the critters are going to help inoculate our new pile here we go layering now we did a layer of the food from our our other pile that we've transported over here and i want to cover it up with some bedding and the bedding is great to absorb any excess moisture and also bless you bless you thank you also to um have another food source for your critters. So you just need a, a thin layer to start, which is, this looks good. And now let's take a heap, a couple heaps from our mature compost pile. So that goes food, uh, brown, brown carbon, and then mature compost? Yeah, there's like, I like that ratio because- you have to do it like in that specific order? Um, not all the time. Some people kind of mix it up, but as long as there's a way for the worms to kind of crawl through the layers because it's basically you're creating a worm buffet or a critter buffet for all the food sources easy for them to reach and travel to. So we did a whole bunch of compost making and critter catching outside and we brought those critters inside and we're going to use microscopes to have a look at them. We've got a small USB microscope that is pretty low power and we're going to use that to, to look at the bigger organisms we found. And then we've got uh, a higher power microscope that we're going to look at the soil sample and we'll see what we find in our compost. Yeah, you can see the cilia on its head, right? Yeah, the little tentacle thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, oh, interesting. What's he eating? It's burrowing around yeah. looking for stuff. Like, where's my next anaerobic meal? Yeah, eating bacteria. That's how he eats? He just stuck on something. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. interesting how it just... And then you can see it's got depth, you know, that, that even though it's under a cover slip on the slide, it's, it, it, it goes a long ways. I mean, it's really tiny. All right, so we did have a cilia in there, which is not necessarily the best the thing best. to see. Yeah. But um, generally, there wasn't, there's not a lot of them. But oh, here's here's testate amoeba. So that's an amoeba, a shelled amoeba. And remember, this is, you know, maybe you, I don't know, are you recording? So yeah. we could do one, I mean, this is one drop of diluted soil. You know, I put, I put like an eighth of a teaspoon of soil into a jar and diluted it with uh, like 10 times the amount of fluid. And so this is a tiny uh, sample from our compost and there's a ton of biology here. The smallest things on the screen are all bacteria. But this is an amoeba that's got a shell and it's called a testate amoeba. And there's actually quite a lot of testate amoeba in here. And also then what's all the big stuff? There's bits of soil and plant material. So it's compost in action. Um, and here is some fungal hyphae. This oh, is, yes. This it's is good the, stuff. the body of a fungus. And I can tell it's not a root because it has that sharp, right, right angle. In the junction there. Certainly our fungi, the fungi and bacteria are the, the basis, right? FBI. Okay, so we, we took in our critters and we're using our low power USB scope here um, to look at some of our macro invertebrates, some of the critters we found. And this is a very small millipede. Uh, not a lot of definition there with this microscope. Um, you can see its antenna. And, and maybe you can see that it's got lots of legs underneath there. It's, it's hard to see the segments. Um, but if we move over and look at our, where are they? There we go. We got some pincher bugs. 
you can see that there are insects, six pairs of legs, six uh, legs, three pairs of legs, and pedipalps, and you can see the antenna pretty clearly. And then in here, we have another segmented organism that's still moving around, and this is see the segments there and it has little CT that stick out of the side. Maybe you can see those little hairs sticking out of the side of the segments. What do they do? They, they help it move in the, in the soil. Mm. And then under here, on the other side of this, if I can find it, we have a soldier fly larvae. So this is a larvae, still alive. So you can see it's mouth parts and you can see very clearly the hair sticking out of the segments there mm, so and soldier flies are um, it's moving yeah it's still alive soldier flies are are don't bite don't sting and they are the larvae in particular are great for breaking down compost and manures so soldier fly larvae so we found we found uh, fungal hyphae of course, lots of bacteria. We found um, a ciliate, uh, testate amoeba, and then we had quite a few different macroinvertebrates in our compost. Hey, so we had fun with our compost today. We made a pile. We looked at some critters under a couple of different microscopes. And what did you learn today, Eru? I learned about soldier flies. Yeah, what, anything special about them? Uh, did not know that they did not bite or sting. How about that? They're kind of a nice fly. Yeah. What about you, Jasmine? Uh, I learned about the laying of a compost pile, layering of a compost pile, how you do the you do the carbon slash brown, then you do the newer compost, and then the mature compost. All right, so layering those greens and browns. Yeah. All right. And um, what did I learn today? Um, I learned that uh, how to use the computer with both microscopes. Mm, that was a little bit tricky. Technology. And, uh, what did I learn? I learned how to have more fun doing compost. All right. So yeah, get out there and have fun with your compost. Thanks for watching. Bye. Next time. <laughs>